officially to the world, Israel was reinstated as a nation May 14, 1948. Um, Israel was desolate in all manner of speaking across the entire land. And in the last 70, no, we're not at 70 yet, last 66 years, 60, yeah, 66 years, Israel went from being a complete, com, yeah, a complete and desolate land to Israel is the third largest distributor of fruits and vegetables to the world. Israel is the largest distributor of flowers to the entire planet. Over 500 million orders a year go out to the world. Um, Israel, had, uh, Israel has more Nobel Peace Prize winners than any other nationality or nation. Um, I mean, the list goes on. Some of the greatest medical and scientific breakthroughs have been done by Israel. Um, Israel has the best military breakthrough than any military on the planet, and that's the Iron Dome. There's no other military on the planet that has the technology that they use that created the Iron Dome that is dropping Hamas rockets out of the sky left to right. Uh, I mean, we can go on and on and on. These are all things referring to Ezekiel 36 and what God says He would do. He says that I will restore you, not for your name's sake, because you have profaned my name among the nations. Israel, even though Israel is vitally blessed, Israel is not holy, unfortunately. Israel is still sinning gravely against our Father. Um, we have the gay parades that go on in Jerusalem. Israel, unfortunately, is one of the biggest abortion nations in the world, next to America. Yeah. And um, a couple of Asian... Huh? The North country is important. Yeah. And the North Country, I'm not even going to go there. I thought you could buy it. Oh, Tel Aviv, you can get anything you want. And, uh, including nudist beaches. So, but, um, so Israel, 75, about 75% 75 of Israel is not religious. They do not follow Yah or any kind of religion whatsoever. Um, she is still doing the same thing she has always done that has got her in so much trouble with Yah. Um, Kabbalah, uh, mysticisms, all kinds of, of graven images and, and idols and, and all of these things. And Judaism as far as uh, the Talmud and Mishnah. Um, something that was Yeshua was rebuking the Pharisees for back then and they're still doing the same stuff today. So that's why Yah said that Israel is a stiff-necked people. And, um, but the veil... A blindness was put over them because of her disobedience, but that veil is slowly being removed. Israel is growing in, uh, more and more towards the Father. There are more and more Jews every day who are receiving Yeshua as Messiah, both in the rabbinical and and in, and just your everyday. Um, uh, if my information is correct and what I learned. Israel um, is either last year or the year before last has the very first Messianic University. And so, you know, they're becoming, they're, they're opening up more. And should be because we are getting really, really close. So Ezekiel 36, Yah says, I, I, do, not I do not save you re or restore you because you've been doing anything right. Because you've been profaning my name among the nations. But for my name's sake, Yah made a covenant with Israel through Abraham that he promised that Israel would be his people. And that and he even tells in Torah, there's prophetic word in the Torah where he uh, prophetically tells Abraham that Israel's going to go into captivity for 400 plus years and, and that she's going to be scattered among the nations. That's why Abram became Abraham. He is the father of nations. Because Yah was already saying from the beginning that I'm going to be scattering y'all like sheep. And uh, so these are these are pointers. But what the key points are now of what to expect, of what we're going to see in this generation. First, the restoration of Israel, Ezekiel 36. And the raising up of Israel, Ezekiel 37. 
the dead bones, the dry bones, the, the, the vision that God gave to Israel, the valley of the dry bones. And he says, uh, he said to speak to these dry bones and tell them to rise up and have sinew and muscle and tissue and skin and everything come upon them. Because for, for 1,800 plus years, Israel didn't exist as a nation since 70 AD when Titus of Rome destroyed Israel in the temple and Jerusalem. And Israel scattered, except for a very tiny, minute piece of Judah. Because Yah always promised that there would be a remnant of Judah in the land. And there has been always. But the Hebrew language ceased to exist. Zephaniah 3 9, talking, referring to the last days, I will restore a holy language unto my people. Uh, ben Yehuda Eliezer, uh, in the, in the late eight, uh, mid 1800s, late 1800s, brought the Hebrew language back. Amen. Amen. And restored a holy language. Never in history has a culture or a people ceased to exist like this and ever come back. We are seeing the hand of the ever-living Yah. If you have doubts in your faith, look at Israel. Because if that doesn't bring you some faith back around, I don't know it will. Since 1948, Israel has had three to four major wars against all of the Arab countries around them. Syria, Lebanon, uh, Egypt, uh, Jordan. Um, uh, see, there's a couple more. Missing one or two in there. Uh, Libya's whatever uh, put Sudan and all of these things all of these nations have come against Israel one time or another at the same time and Israel keeps winning and there's no rationality to it there's no logical explanation to our finite minds to the military to anybody else some of you may have heard me say last week or week before that West Point the biggest uh, military academy in America right so is the military captain. And even when they when they teach war strategy, they will not touch Israel's wars. Because in all matters speaking, they're outnumbered five and six to one, and there's no way that they should win. They should be utterly obliterated. They are completely surrounded by their enemy, but yet they're still here. And if you <laughs> And I shared it with you. I wanted to find a clip to put up here, but I couldn't find one that I could actually pull off and just wouldn't let me do it. But a newspaper clipping that actually has from Hamas saying that their God is redirecting our rockets. And it's like, hello? If you know that their God is stopping you, don't you think you should go sit down? You know, it's like... <laughs> before... Huh? Time for a timeout. Yes, a serious timeout. Go sit down and rethink some things. But um, this is it's. Look, I'm going to tell you something. Hamas is a prime picture and example of what Yah says will happen to those who continue to reject Him. They are released to a hardened heart and a reprobate mind. Revelation talks about uh, uh, even all throughout the, the bold judgments and trumpet judgments. It refers to those who, it says that when these things are unleashed on them, it says that they, they will curse God for the, the plagues being poured out on them, but they will not repent. And I just don't get that. Because when, if I do something wrong or I feel convicted on something, I'm like so sorry. I'm like, Abba, please forgive me. And then I'm beating myself up for the next few days. Feel like you know, uh, I can't imagine knowing that Yah is like, here's the plague on you because you're not listening, and me turning around getting mouthy with them. It scares the daylights out of me, and it says that they will shake their fists. I mean, and it's like, are you crazy? This is not what. This is what a hardened heart is. And this is what somewhat when Yah has completely pulled His hand off of you. And this is the truest form of Hebrews 10.31 where it says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen? Amen. Alright. So, um, so the next pictures. We have, well let's go to Matthew 24 real quick.
I really love end time prophecy. I, I, it's just, I mean, I could go at this thing for hours on end. So y'all might have to tell me to stop. Matthew 24, starting at verse 3. You, now he sat on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the signs of you coming and of the end of the age? And Yeshua said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am Messiah, and will deceive many. All right. Excuse me. Uh, um, how many times do we see people popping up? It's like an every year thing. Somebody popping up claiming to be Jesus. We've got the Spanish guy down in Florida, or wherever he was. He tattooed 666 on himself, calls himself the Antichrist, but said he's Jesus in the flesh. All right, okay. Somebody's really confused. We've got uh, we've got people like uh, the Hindu god Maitreya. He claims to be Jesus and the Muslim god and the Buddhist god and all the gods rolled up into one. You know that guy died. Oh, is he? Yeah. When? Uh, well, I guess he's not Jesus then, huh? <laughs> oh, man, I do not want to be near him when he stands before God. Judgment Day, man. Um, uh, let's see, Buddha. I mean, claiming to be a god, but we've got, uh, there's a number of people, I don't remember the names, but we are, anybody's lived t 10 years or longer has experienced hearing somebody claim to be Jesus Christ. Um, uh, Sim Kum Moon, whatever his name is, Korean dude, I think he's dead now, but he claimed to be the second coming of Jesus in the flesh. You have this one religion that is God the Mother. Um, she is... Somebody correct me, email me, whatever. I think it's the Philippines, but I'm not sure, but it's, it's, a, it's over there somewhere. She sits as God. Uh, no, that's another one, but that's not the one I'm talking about. Uh, she's Asian, and she sits as God, and everybody worships her as God. And I'm just, and she is Mother God. And I, they use the Bible all the way across the board for everything to back up what they do. Of course, the big problem is saying that she's God, yeah. just to fit. But um, all right, so we've got. So Yeshua says there will be many, right? And there's some, uh, John, John of God. Uh, he think he's down in Brazil, and he does this really sick way of healing people, claiming to heal people and stuff like that. I mean, some really off-the-wall stuff. Then you got the one pastor who claims to be Jesus or whatever. He boots people in the face to heal. Yeah. And I mean... So, yeah, to, to that extent where he said the Holy Spirit told him to boot this old lady right in the face so she'd be healed. And it's like, let me kick you in the face. <laughs> Alright. Verse 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Alright. In the last 100 years, there have been more recorded wars and all the wars put together in history and recorded. Huh? And hey, don't get ahead of me. <laughs> you two. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm like, you two. <laughs> um, okay, so in the last hundred years, we've had more recorded wars across this planet and rivers of wars than all in history combined. All right? Earthquakes <laughs> since uh, the sea. All right, major wars since 1904. There have been endless wars from the Russo-Japan War to the Co Kosovo Liberation War of '99, all the way up to the present Russia-Ukraine War, Hamas-Israel, and so on and so forth. I mean, it is, the list is endless. All right, in the last since. Since 1898 to, to 2003, there have been over 203,000 earthquakes from a 0.4 magnitude on up. 
And since 1970 to present, there have been well over 70,000 earthquakes. That's over a third of that number in just 40 years. We are seeing, uh, there was one, and that's, and I'm sorry, the ones from 70 till now, that's counting the ones that are 5.0 magnitude on up. Okay? Not, we're not even counting about all the ones. In one year, I'm sorry, in one day, California had 1,500 earthquakes. Really? In one day. They were all below 4 magnitude. But 1,500 earthquakes in one day, that was just in California that day. And around the entire planet, it was over 10,000 or something that one day. I mean, these are things that are going on left and right. It's absolutely insane. We are seeing the rise of wars and rumors of wars like never before. We're seeing sickness and disease running rampant like never before. We're seeing pestilence and famine and stuff. Now, okay, one person will say, okay, well, this has always been. And yes, this has always been. But what has not always been is all of it happening at the same time. Usually, okay, the Spanish flu. And what was it? 1908? 1918? Something like that. 3.7 million died from that, from the Spanish flu. This is one big massive event. The genocide and everything that's gone on and everything going on in the last hundred years and, and uh, abortions, that's the biggest genocide there is. This country alone in the last 30 years has killed over 50 million babies. Well, birth control, direct abortion, the after the next morning pill, whatever you want to call it. I mean, yeah, all of these things, over 50 million abortions in the last 30 years, and that's just this country alone. And we're not the highest abortion rate country. Uh, it's an Asian country and Israel. Israel and them are like neck and neck. It's bad. So here's the thing. All of these things happening at the same time. So what should Yeshua say next? For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And we've been seeing this picking up speed since 1948, even more so. We're seeing everything heightening faster, getting worse. The labor pains. What... Okay, ladies, I already know you know the answer to this, but what happens with a woman as she's pregnant? And what happens with the labor pains? They slow, they get worse and worse and worse. It goes from 15-minute contractions to 10-minute contractions all the way down to one every minute. Unless, unless it just happens quicker. But the thing is, contractions with the baby, these labor pains, they get worse and worse and worse, especially in that third trimester. I, I will be willing to say we are in the third trimester. Because, and that's just my opinion, we are seeing everything jumping off and, the, and, and Israel, as it says in Isaiah, that she will be a frying pan in the midst of the fire. It, that fire is getting hotter and hotter and the fuse on that keg is getting smaller and smaller. And we are waiting for it to finally just explode all over the place. We are seeing Islam getting so anxious and so determined to do what it wants, that it has hit almost every country, every major country in the world, Islam is committing acts of terrorism. And they're becoming so bold because we have leadership, like in this nation, saying that they're a peaceful religion. And any anybody, a blind person, could see what they're about. And this is what Yeshua was talking about, blind leading the blind. And all of these things, okay, so we're still not done. All these are beginnings of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by nations, by all nations for my name's sake. How many martyrdoms have we heard of throughout the last 1,800 years, 1,900 years? Christians being killed and burned at the stake and, and flayed in. I mean, we can get into some really gruesome details. But in the worst ways. But that is common. But now, now it's picked up pace and Islam is at the helm of this slaughter. For the first time in history, Mosul, Iraq does not have a single 
Christian in. They just ran every one of them out the door. And it, it, those were the exact headlines. For the first time in Mosul's history, there is not a Christian in Mosul, Iraq. Uh, well, it's actually, it was a three-choice thing. Convert or pay a tax specifically created for them or die. So they all packed up, started leaving. But the thing that happened was, Islam wasn't okay with that. So they went and robbed them and took them, took everything they owned before they were able to get out the door. So they not only completely robbed them and everything else, now they are going to refugee camps with absolutely nothing. Christians are being uh, hunted down and everything more than it, it just keeps getting worse and worse every year. And from Africa to the Middle East to to uh, the Asian countries and stuff like that. And now here, here in America, we are seeing the rise against Jesus believers. We are seeing it picking up pace. We're seeing it getting worse and worse. And it's only a matter of time before our government allows us to be killed. Or they themselves are going to put us on the chopping block. It's only a matter of time. When we have a nation that allows a Muslim to be the head of this nation, and he has made no qualm with showing that he sides with Hamas and with everything that's going on over there. He continues to pour money into the Muslim Brotherhood who is known to be ahead over these terrorist groups. We would be foolish to think in any way, shape, or form that this is not going to come on us. You want, you want to know the way that Yah handles a nation that has become so evil corrupt? Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. A pastor a long, long time ago told me, he said, if Yah does not bring judgment on this nation, he will have to rise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize. Because we have far outpassed their sins. The evil and perversion. We have a nation that has taken a covenant of Yah, the rainbow, and have turned it into the symbol of homosexuality. And now every time you ever... I mean, it has been ingrained in our brain the last 20 years with that symbol being related to homosexuality that every time you see that symbol, unless you see the rainbow in the sky, I, okay, I, I can't speak for others, but when I see it on the back of somebody's car, the first thing I think of is that it's homosexuality. When I see it in the sky, I think of what it is, what it really is, and that's Yah's covenant, His promise that He will never destroy the world, the world by water again. But as Satan is known to do, he has taken the holy of Yah and made it filthy. And we could do this for hours going down this list, but we're getting just to the key things. All right. So what else does Yeshua say? Matthew 24 can almost give us the whole picture of everything of what we're getting into. Verse 10, And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Okay, this nation is one of the rudest nations in the world. When it comes to attitude, I'm sorry. <laughs> some areas are worse than others. Yes, yeah, some areas are worse than others, but I mean, you beep at somebody, they start showing you sign language. <laughs> or they want to get a gun out and shoot you. Or they want to run you off the road and beat the snot out of you. I used to be one of them. I used to have so much road rage. If you, if I didn't like the way you were driving, I would try to run you off the road so I could get out of the car and kick your rear end. That's how bad I was. I, not a woman. Only a guy. A woman, I just a woman, I would cuss her out. I I was I guess I'm not bragging. This is not to be proud of, but I was that bad. But it's even worse nowadays. You got games going on that if somebody's driving in the dark and doesn't have their headlights on, and you flash your headlights, um, this this is a game practice to initiate somebody into games that if you flash them, they're supposed to come after you and kill you. And it's happened many times. So don't flash your headlights if somebody's got their headlights up at night. Don't do it. Because you have no idea if they're a part of a game that's issue. We have the games and we oh my goodness. Um, the the hatred, the what what does he say here again? The offense. I see more people getting offended 
by other people and each other than I've ever seen before in my life. And in the last five years, it seems like it's exponentially jumped. It's horrible. And half of the problem is in the body. Everybody's getting offended toward each other because, well, I don't agree with what you're saying here. So what? Now, if, it's, if, if I'm declaring that God said that He came yesterday, or I'm declaring something that is direct lie against the Word of God, then so what? We are going to have difference of opinion of certain things in Scripture. It's okay. The thing that's not okay is us not being united in the Father. We are the body. It says that we are the hands and the feet and the mouth and the eyes and the ears. And it says... I mean, I've heard the song, so what are you doing? You're not doing nothing. We're not doing anything because we're too busy bickering with each other to say who's doing it right, who's teaching it right, and who isn't. Now, if we're teaching directly from the Word, then you're doing it right. If you have a, maybe you don't quite understand something, then y'all will show it to you if you're seeking the truth. Amen? Amen. But when we're out there... Uh, uh, I totally agree. Amen, okay. But when we're out there and we're teaching stuff that's not of the Word of Yah, and we're adding tradition and garbage and a bunch of junk, then you are wrong and you need to be corrected. Yes. But we in the body need to be helping each other. Yes. And we're not. And we're being offended. We're the worst offenders. It's those who are lost and in sin, it don't matter. They're lost and in sin. That's the least of their concern. We're the ones that are supposed to be out there helping to see them be saved, to, re to reach them with the Gospel of Yeshua. Right? Amen? Amen. But yet we're sitting here getting offended because of stupid stuff. We're allowing things to get to us and, and tear us down and break us apart and separate the body and everything else because of stupid stuff because of a hardened heart, because of a lack of love and compassion. Because we're not loving each other. We're not lifting each other up. Yes, we have moments getting irritated, annoyed, stuff like that. It's going to happen. We're still not perfect. I was going to make a joke. Can't run. We're... Just absolutely. Families are going to do it. Brothers and sisters in the body are going to do it. It's going to happen. It's already been happening. Michelle. Bless your heart. You're a joy to have here. You are. You got a childlike zeal and, and fire for the Father, and I love it, and we love it. Amen. All right. Um, Matthew, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. All of those refer to last days. What else does Yeshua say? Um, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. I. I don't know how many people I've run into who have declared themselves to be a prophet. Churches that I've spoken at as a part of some event, and they said, the prophet so-and-so will come and speak now. And I'm like, exit, stage left. <laughs> My other left. Anybody who has to put that title on themselves is full of baloney. I don't care. Because anybody who is a real prophet is not going to want everybody to know. Because you're going to have everybody, every Tom, Dick, and Uncle Steve coming to you going, will you tell me what the future is for my life and then everything else? <laughs> oh also, if they're truly a prophet, it'll speak for itself. They won't need to go out and boast about it. If, right. if they say something and it happens repeatedly, then, then you'll know. I mean, you won't need to prof You won't need to proclaim that you are one. Well, and on the same breath, there are times that Yah reveals that stuff to us about something that's about to happen. Does that make you a prophet? No. no. It doesn't. It 
It doesn't. Absolutely. Amen. That's exactly what it is. Discernment. People give some discernment and they think they're a prophet. And that's the problem. We're too quick to want to jump and think that we're just all this, got this big old fancy gift all of a sudden. And Yah gives us gifts, yes. But you better be ready for it because it's not, there's, it's not a gift that you want to be going around announcing. And because Torahlessness, because that's the actual word there, will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Wow. Do we know where that's at? Yes. Right. What's the very first number one commandment of all commandments? Oh, okay. No. No. Uh, huh? Yes. Love y'all with all of your heart, mind, and strength. That is the very first number one commandment. If you don't follow Torah, you just broke that one. Right. Plain and simple. If you are not keeping Torah, then you are breaking that commandment. And I'm not saying because certain circumstances, whatever. Okay, I'm purposefully just being like, ah, that's okay, I don't have to do that. Yeah, well, your Torah listen. If we are seeking to be in obedience to His Torah, then we are doing what it says, to love and call for heart, mind, and strength. Then, the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. And you guys remember what I did about the Ten Commandments and those two commandments? Yes. How they correlate? They overlap? Yes. The first five, one, two, three, four, five, are, are loving y'all with all of your heart, mind, and strength. And six through ten, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? Your wife's your neighbor too. Or your husband, or whichever. Alright. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So we, if we endure and we continue to persevere and get through this, and watch and pay attention and learn and act. Now, should we live in fear because we see all hell breaking loose on all of the earth and everything? And I say that word, not, it's not a cuss word, and that better speaking, because that's literally what's breaking loose on this planet. Alright. So, should I be afraid? Does that mean I've got to run out and, and find a hole in the ground and go dig in it and hide it? No. No, it doesn't. If y'all wants us to go and prepare, he's going to lead it on our hearts. But the thing that we need to prepare, if you want to be ready for the deceptions that's coming, and we haven't even got to that part yet, Read your, Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Word. Be in the Word. Know the Word. Alright? And this Gospel of the Kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. So, Daniel chapter 7, chapters 7 through 12. What is the abomination of desolation standing in the temple? That's not your question. It's uh, Barack Obama. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <gosh. laughs> Did you record that? Yes. <laughs> I'm about to send that to him. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> The Antichrist, anti-Messiah, right? It will be the man who in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, 1 through 8, says that he will seat himself in the temple of God and call himself God and act like God. So what temple is that? It would be the third temple. Okay, so here's more end time prophecy of bringing in the picture of everything that's falling into place. Right now in Israel, started last summer, they broke ground and started building the exact replica of King Solomon's temple in Israel. But it's in an area that they're using as a yeshiva. What's a yeshiva? Anybody know? A school. Right, a school, but a specific school. For priests. For priests, for rabbis. But this school, this yeshiva, will be specifically to train the Levitical priesthood. Israel claims that they have the Levitical priesthood all together ready to go into the temple when they rebuild the actual temple on the Temple Mount. Alright? Now, Scripture teaches us this in two places. 
First Thessalonians, or no. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, it says that he will see himself in the temple of God. There's only one temple of God, and it ain't the Muslim mosque. It's not the Allah's mosque, the Golden Dome, or anything like that. I'm actually hoping that since the rockets are going every which way, that they're going to blow up their own dome. That would be funny. I would laugh. I would laugh to death. I would laugh to death. Laugh to death. Um, whatever. Um, okay, the second verse that teaches us this is Revelation chapter 11. It said, he said he gave him a read and said, go out and measure the outer court and, and the altar. Okay? Well, there's no outer court and there's no altar. And for you to have an altar, you also have to have a... Temple. Temple. Okay? Uh, yes, you do. Well, I'm not talking about for sacrifice, no. But he says to go out and measure, but leave the temple. Because the outer court, I'm sorry, the, I'm, 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 let me do that over, blew that. To go out and measure the, the altar and the and the temple for the outer court is still unto the Gentiles. Okay? Because uh, Aloha Goyim, the fullness of the Gentiles is not complete. Okay? So if it's referring to the temple and the altar, that means it's coming back. Second Thessalonians is also a witness to that. What does what does y'all always do? Two two confirmations of anything that he always does. All right. So we have that. So this is another picture. We've got the yeshiva being built. We've got every single thing that needs to go in the Torah. That the Torah states has to be in the temple of God. They have every single thing all the way down to the crown. Cost uh, what was it? Thirty thousand dollars to build the gold crown that goes on the high priest. All right? They've got the garments. They've got the effort. They, they've got a $2 million gold menorah. Everybody has seen it. It's in the glass case. It's like six and a half feet tall or something like that. I walked right by it. They had it on display out on the stairs going down to the uh, 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 western wall. And I was just like, wow. And it's in glass. It's like, well, nobody's going to try to steal that because... They will be shot before they even get five feet, not to mention the thing probably weighs who knows how much. You got two million dollars worth of gold into this menorah. Um, so they've got the altar, they've got everything, they've got the cornerstone that scripture talks about that it has to be for the temple to be built, right? And they have the pure red heifer. They thought they had it once and they ended up to have a blemish. But now they're saying they have it again. So we'll see. Because what's the pure red heifer for? But for something specific, to sanctify the temple. It's a sacrifice to sanctify the temple. Okay? So we've got all of this. They've got all of that. And never before. None of this stuff. I mean, I'm not even halfway through the list of what we can get into. Of the key signs, the, the everything before us. Alright, so let's go back. Let's go. What else does Yeshua say here? Verse 16 and 17, Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. Verse 18, And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. Alright, so 16, 17, 18 is talking about the fleeing into the mountains. What mountains are those? Judean hills. Judean mountains in Jerusalem, yes. And where does that reference to? Where do you get the confirmation in that? Revelation 12 dragon going after her. And it says that the earth is opened up and it swallows the, the... It says that the dragon goes after her like water. And that reference to the Hebrew, the word water is referring to a people, an army, going after her to, to destroy her. And it says that she is taken into the wilderness where she is cared for for 1,260 days, which is... Three and a half years. years. Which is how long, what is the tribulation, right? So we've got the entrance in the Antichrist. And right away, he's going after Yah's people to take them out. And a, a remnant of them are taken into the wilderness where they are kept for three and a half years, kept safe, because Yah promises that there will always be a remnant of escape Amen. from Israel. All the way back to Torah. Alright? So, so, whatever signal, whatever sign gives them this, bam, off they go. I mean, they're working in the field. They don't even get to go home and grab their grab their tallit, grab their jacket, grab their kippah. 
Nothing. It's straight to the hills. And for the last 30 years, Petra, which is a part of the Judean mountains, has been being prepared by Christians and Jews and stuff for the last 30 years. They've got stockpiled and everything else with food and, and water, seeds, whatever. And they've been doing this for the last 30 years, getting ready for this coming. Okay? I know I'm going over a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm, I told you, this is an overview picture of everything going on. To really, this, uh, if anything that this comes out of on this message, I hope it brings an exciting stirring in your heart and in your soul. We are so close to a Messiah coming home to, to come and proclaim His kingdom and reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen? Amen. Alright, so verse 19. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. Now, I have always understood, pray that your flight not be on Sabbath. Because on Sabbath, you're resting. You're not thinking about nothing else. You're not thinking about suddenly having to take off running for the hills. And we're right here. So, you know, <laughs> it'd just be like, okay, well, I guess we're going home today. But um, in winter, never set right with me. It's like, I don't get it. Except the only thing I can think of is that if it happened in the middle of winter. But I mean, if in the middle of winter, if we're prepared for something, then we're prepared regardless, right? Well, one thing that my, my pastor, uh, Jerry's wife, Rhonda, came up with something that she was talking about, and um, I found it most interesting. A lot of what they're talking about as far as global warming. Everybody's thinking that the planet's exponentially heating up. But what they're not talking about is that the cause and effect that some of this is going to have that's going to cause a miniature ice age, is what they call it. Not an ice age that annihilates life on here, but that will drop the vortex that's been dropping down. Will super. Well, anybody's heard, uh, seen the movie Day After Tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, it's something like that, but maybe not on, on such a big magnitude scale, where the vortex drops down and super freezes everything instantaneously. All right, and it shows that the upper half of the United States just went under ice. Okay, and the lower half you had snow in Mexico, which never happens. This past winter, it was uh, uh, a uh, display on the news that the Entire United States, North America, was all under the Yes, and what's scarier is they're saying this winter coming is supposed to be worse than this last winter. This makes that verse make a whole lot more sense to me now. This is where preparation needs to come in for ourselves, just out of common sense, regardless of being in the end days. Stocking up food, stocking up water, stocking up extra blankets. Look. I, and, and some of you may first have the thought, what do you want to shoot me for? Oh, yeah, guns good. Bow and arrow. Hopefully, oh, yeah, arrow. Hopefully <laughs> I thought she'd shoot me. I'm like, I, what do I do? Um, you know, crossbows, <laughs> compound bows, guns, all this stuff to protect your household stuff. This is common sense because this world's going crazy. And it's going to get to a point where people are going to start doing what they want, attacking and stuff like that. You see it in every country around the planet. It's got to come to this country, and it's going to happen. Now, some of you may say, well, I don't have the money to stock up. Look, take three bucks, go buy a 24-pack 24 24-pack 24 of water, and put it away. The next paycheck, take 20 bucks if you can, and go to Costco or find somewhere where you get a 25-pound bag of, of, of beans and rice, for 10 bucks and just do a piece at a time get go to go to I think Walmart has them uh, Walmart or Home Depot get it's a white five gallon bucket it's food grade make sure it says food grade with a lid put that bag of rice put that bag of beans put dry fruit whatever you're gonna do stick it in there smack that lid on there and that thing is shelving for years you're in good shape because it's sealed nothing can get to it Alright? Same with the water. Make sure it's in a cool area where it's not a bunch of moisture. It doesn't get hot and cold. It stays pretty steady. Easy to do. Put it in a closet in your room. 
Alright? This is just common sense because we are seeing stuff. Our economy crashed in 08. We're at 16,000 points on, on uh, what's it called? That's, uh, Dow, that's what I was looking for, the Dow, stock exchange. 16,000, that's never ever happened before in history. In, nine, in the late 90s, we hit 14,000 and we were very prosperous. How do we, as a country that's 25% unemployed, have a Dow that's at 16,000? It's all fake. It's all a phony ploy that we have crawled out of this massive stock market crash that was a worldwide stock market crash in 08. And, and everybody's saying the same thing now. We're about to crash again. Okay. One, one, go ahead real quick, Michelle. Well, I lived a long time ago. I 2000, you know, when they were saying that the computers were going to crash and all that, everybody's yeah. talking up. Well, I, I, I heard Pastor say, whenever we have to flee in the mountains and you stock up and everything, what are you going to do with all that stuff? You've got to go to the mountains, so you can't really take it with you, so you just need to trust God. Well, we're not fleeing to the mountains. Israel's fleeing to the mountains. Um, if we flee, Yah will give us plenty of time ahead of time to know. But here's the thing, too, and I actually was going there. <coughs> when we're stocking up, if you're stocking up and you're preparing for stuff, y'all may say, I want you to up and go and take nothing with you. You have no idea that what you stocked up is for somebody else. You have no idea. But to say what Michelle is saying is that ultimately what it boils down to, we are under y'all's protection. And y'all has us covered. And we could have not a single thing, but we could be ghosted in the eye of the storm where all the plagues at least all around and not be touched. So it's also wise just in case of a natural disaster to have these things. And it, it might not necessarily be because it's tribulation time. It might right. be because there's war brought to our own land and we can't shop and we can't leave our houses. And we're living on rations from the government. Um, right. so it's wise to have these things regardless of what time we are what time period we're at in well, you know. and, Okay, we've got is it Yellowstone that has Old Faithful? Yeah. yeah. Okay, is one of six super volcanoes in the world. If one of these erupt, the entire planet is covered in um, uh, ash for years. It would fully turn this planet into another ice age. But the thing of it is, is that it usually rises up and down a few inches every year. In the last year and a half, Old Faithful, the ground has risen 20 feet. 20 feet. The animals are leaving. Animals, the road is melting. They have blocked off that whole area. And when you go on Google Maps to look at a, what's it called? A, a present time to look at something on, on like Google Maps. No, no. Um, what? You, you, uh, what? Some, oh, I thought somebody said I real left. time. Real time. <clears throat> when you go on there to look at something on real time, uh, you can use Google Maps, stuff like that, right? Well, if you go on it, they have a loop because they won't let anybody see what's really going on there right now. And they've got everybody blocked out. Nobody's allowed to get in there near Old Faithful. Uh, the ground has risen 20 feet. Um, the lady from Ohio sent me all kinds of documentation on it and stuff. And uh, the, the roads are melting. The animals are scattered and split. And I mean, <laughs> okay, that's a reason to get some preparation because if something starts leaking and popping straight down to Mexico, we need to go to get away from it. Um, let's look at the other thing. Let's look at all of the all of the oil spills in the Gulf of Mexico that happen is still has not been cleaned up. The the waters are so poisoned and nasty now that the West Coast, the Pacific Ocean, don't eat any fish out of it. Because between all the poisons from the Japan, uh, Fukushima, which is still leaking all the way across, and all the junk that got washed out from the tsunami waves in Japan have been washing up on uh, the California coastlines, and all the way up to, to Canada, west coastlines, the, food, the fish are no good. Okay? You can't touch anything in the Gulf of Mexico area, because... All, because of all of the oil that still has not been cleaned up and it is no good. Well, and as, the, also the chemicals they put in there to clean up the oil. Which yeah, did, which I'll did imagine work. that. So, the Atlantic <coughs> Ocean 
are actually the Mediterranean Sea. It seems to be the only ocean so far left that's not polluted or corrupted. What does Scripture say in the last days? That the oceans will be made bitter. That they will be. That they will be. Uh, people will drink it and they will die. Now we may not be to that point yet, but it's getting there. What happened in China to that river running through China the other day? Just turned into blood. That was it. That was it. That's an old photo. Now this is. I know that one, but the one that just happened three days ago. It was all over the news. Oh. Did you have something else to say? I did. I don't remember now. Just that okay. we haven't eaten fish. We haven't eaten fish for almost two years. Huh? What is this one third of the waters? Oh. Well, no, because it talks about ships and stuff. There's, now there's two, one of them may be people as well. We know that one third of mankind will, will die. I was, somebody was talking to me about, they were saying that they think that uh, food stamps and uh, Social Security and disability and all that is marked. No. 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 They say the RFID chip is Mark II. It's not. It's just, these are all things to um, lead up to it. Desensitize us so that when it does come on the scene, it'll be accepted easily. That's all it is. All right. Uh, let's look at, okay. So. Yeah, we have, we don't have to fear anything. Now, Satan will do anything he can to make us afraid. We, we don't have nothing to be afraid because if we belong to the Father, we are signed, sealed, and delivered. We are secure in Him. We have the promise of Psalm 91 where it says, A thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not fall nigh thee. Amen. When God unleashes His judgment on the wicked of this world, it is not going to be released on us. His Word says so. It says that we will observe and see the punishment of the wicked. Now, does that mean that we may not die in a natural disaster? Yeah, we very well could be. It's just, it's just something that happens. Does that mean that a week from now somebody won't die in a car accident? Yep, it sure will happen. It happens all the time. It will always happen. But when it comes to the judgment of Yah on this wicked world, He already tells us, I will keep you safe. Just like Israel and Egypt. Amen. All right, we're almost done. Zechariah, uh, let's see, hang on. All right, verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is Messiah, or there, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Revelation chapter 13 talks about the false prophet. It says that he is allowed to give life to the graven image of the Antichrist. There's only one who's, who has the power and authority to give life. And that's why it says he's allowed to. He is given the ability so that he can give life to something. And it says that he is also has the ability to bring fire down from heaven. Now, if that's not a copycat of the Father, then I don't know what is. But, what, but the thing that, why again? Why again will it be the elect? And we, it also says that if it were possible, let's see, see I have told you, let's see, for false, Christ, false Christ, false prophets, rise up, show great signs and wonders, to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Why will it not be possible for the elect to be deceived? He's already warned us that that was going to happen. How do you know he warned you? Because it says in the Word. In his Word, Lord. Because of reading His Word. It's the only way we're going to know. Knowing His Word from Genesis to Revelation, keeping the feast, keeping the commandments, keeping His Torah, walking in His truth, and knowing how all of it connects. All the feasts point to end time prophecy. The first three, verse 4, pointed to the first coming of Messiah. 
The last three all point to his second coming. They're all prophecy. They're all prophetic. Everything, Shabbat, is prophetic. It is all a part of not only the beginning but the end and everything after that. Everything in his commandments all point to everything that is prophetic. There is nothing wasted. There is nothing that this is separated from this. It is all intertwined, connected together, braided together, however way you want to look at it. It is all a part of what Yah's Word is. And those who study to show themselves approved unto Yah. I, I could keep going, man. I've like, got three more hours worth in me here. Um, for as lightning to see... See, I have told you beforehand, therefore if they say to you, Look, he is in the desert, do not go. Look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes in from the west and flashes to the or from the east flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be, for whether the carcass is, there the eagles will gather together. When Yeshua shows up, is there any chance we'll miss it? No. Not a prayer. There's no way. Because according to what's that verse I had last night, Michelle? Zechariah 9.14 I'm going to say it, but I is don't about, know. Yeah. Is about the second coming. And it says that Yahweh will blow the shofar. That's right. Oh. <laughs> There is not anything that's not going to hear the shofar of Yah. But it, it, it's not just any shofar. This one actually, if he's blowing it, that means it comes from where he comes from. It's not of this world. It's not of this earth. Every single person, living creature, being, thing on this earth is going to have a resounding vibration going through their body because God himself will blow his own shofar. And it's, and it's in Zechariah 9.14. Well, in scripture, go ahead, sir. That's right. And with, yeah. a shout, and with a shout from y'all. I'm going to be shouting. Gonna, he's going to blow the show far. <laughs> then he's going to go, hey! <laughs> a whole lot louder. Because every eye shall see it. That's right. Every eye shall see it. Every so I want to do this real quick, all right? We all, I, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but in, in all the years of doing the show far, I, man, still haven't mastered you. <laughs> Are you here? <laughs> Smack him. Good. Ebel. No, Ebel. Keep going. Okay. In all the years of blowing so far, there's something about it. This is Yah's personal instrument to his children. The walls of Jericho came down with these things. Um, Gideon. Mountains have been moved. Gideon. Gideon. Over that again. 300 blew the shofar all at once, and thousands all freaked out and killed themselves. They were confounded. And each other. They were confounded. Okay, and this is by man. So. Christ will rise first, 
and every eye shall see, and everybody's going to know that the God of all creation showed up on the scene. Every knee shall there will be no missing it. There will be no going. What's going on? <laughs> like You're going to come out of a dead sleep. You're going to come out of the dead. Well, the, the, the apostles warn if they say, look, come over here in the desert. There he is. Or over here in a room not to go because it's not him. Yeah. You're going to know. You want to know what's yeah. funny about that? If go here he yeah. is in the desert or here he is in the inner chamber. Yeah. They found, <laughs> they found what's his name again? Nimrod. Nimrod. They found Nimrod's body in the desert in 99. They found Nimrod's remains and they said his remains were extremely preserved. <laughs> okay. Then, in 2003, they found in an inner chamber right. a resurrection chamber That's right. <laughs> that belongs to him, apparently. Hmm. And the image will be brought to life. The image that received <laughs> the deadly wound yeah. will be brought back to life. Yeah. Interesting. Nimrod is the only one throughout the entire Bible who was beheaded. Narrow people looked at Nero, Nero cut his own throat. Not him. Hitler shot himself or poisoned himself. It still goes both ways on that one. Not him. Okay? Most churches teach that the Antichrist will be killed and brought back to life when he's here on the scene. Right. I believed that for a lot of years until I did this study. And this study fits better than anything I've ever seen and backs up my scripture. Guess who who, who beheaded Nimrod? <laughs> uh, <sure>. No. No. <laughs> No, I'm not. Who beheaded Nimrod? Come on. Okay, well, it's been months since I did this one. Esau. It's in the book of Asher, yeah, which Enoch. the Bible quotes in two different places. I thought places. it was Enoch. Why do you? It's not Enoch. Enoch was already gone. No, I thought it was in the book of Enoch. No. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. In the book of Asher? Why do you think... Now, have you ever wondered why Esau came up to Joseph and said, I'm exhausted, I want a bowl of soup? And Joseph said, send me your birthright. And he said, I am vexed. He says, I'm about to die, right? Yes, he yeah. said, I feel, I'm about to die, here's my birthright. Joseph, really? I'm sorry, Jacob. Thank you. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I didn't well, even catch I it. Was, I was just bypassing it all. Well, uh, listen, listen, book of Asher. listen to how it's worded, though. It's, okay, it, but here's the here's the point before we get too far off on that. Well, he comes up and he's exhausted and he says, "Just give give me your bowl of soup." And he says, "Some of your birthright." And so he says, "Okay, I'll, he's I'll like, give what it is to my you." Birthright what to you what is it? I'm about, to die. I'm about to die. So if you if you understand that what is what would it be a Hebrew idiom or whatever, right. and then to compare it to the Book of Asher, it's obvious because there were men coming well, after him. Before I ever read it, the book of Asher, now the reason why I give credence to it is because it's quoted multiple multiple times in the Tanakh, right. the book of Asher. Okay? Um, just like Enoch is quoted by Jude in the book of Jude, he quotes Enoch. Alright, so um, in the book of Asher, I went looked it up and read it, and it says that Esau was at war with uh, Nimrod, and he beheaded Nimrod. And all of Nimrod's army was after Esau. So, all the years that I read Esau and him saying that he's about to die and all this stuff, I'm like, I don't get this. How can you, you're, you're, okay, you're exhausted, you were out hunting or whatever, and then you come home and you're going to sell your birthright because you're that tired? Because you want a bowl of soup? Go make yourself a bowl of soup. I mean, seriously. Because Esau was Torahlessness. He rejected Torah. He was disobedient. He married from the pagan women, pagan women and selling his birthright. That is something that was given to him by Yah. I don't know why he killed Nimrod. Yeah, it's like he's on the same. Well, he was still at war. They were at war. Nimrod was king of the earth. Everybody looked at him. He Nimrod. Okay, all the nations had different names for him. All right, we all know that. Gilgamesh was one of those names. Gilgamesh in the Tanakh is the only man ever referred to as King of Kings and Lord of Lords besides Yeshua. 
<laughs> the other one was, was because he was what people believed was a Nephilim because he was a very giant man. But um, for the sake of argument, he was a mighty man, a mighty warrior, and all the world followed him. All of the armies, all the pagan nations would follow him. They worshipped him and everything else. Nimrod is his true name, and we know that he created the Tower of Babel and all that stuff, right? So, point back to the point. Noah's, that, Noah's great grandson. And what I've studied, I'm not declaring Nimrod's the Antichrist. I'm, just saying, I'm not saying that. Evil kills evil. Hamas all the kills time. the Shiites all the time. <laughs> yeah. and, the Sun or the Sunnis, and Shiites and Sunnis kill each other all the time. Yeah. The only time all the Muslims come together in one accord is for Ramadan. Or, no, it's for uh, the travel to Mecca once a year. Alright, so, okay, and all of that. Um, to, to bring great signs and wonders, and if possible, full even the elect, if they actually resurrect Nimrod, or Gilgamesh is, you know, the other na popular name he's known by, if that doesn't make the world marvel and say who can go against him, like it says in Revelation 13, who can, who can be like unto the beast, who can come against the beast, that would definitely fit. That's all I'm saying. And then last but not least, because I know I've been, I think, over an hour on this now, um, key thing, that what Scripture talks about. It doesn't say that the believers are what Satan goes after. Turn to Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Carrie, read it, please. Please. Paul, can I? Yes. And, and, and here's the thing also, is for many years we believed that, you know, uh, maybe he, the Antichrist would come out of the EU, or he would come out of, you know, calls him the Assyrian. And we did this study, this guy fits really well. But we may learn something a year from now that, you know what I mean? We're not we're not proclaiming that this guy is the answer. Yeah, I'm not proclaiming. We, we just right think now, it's... I, I think he's the best fit in the bill. Yeah, it's it's really interesting how all this is working out. But we're not we're not definitely saying 100% or proclaiming anything. Because since Nimrod or slash Gilgamesh is widely known throughout history, and is still worshipped to this day as a god by many of these cultures throughout the world, if he was to come back on the scene, <laughs> man, I mean, and, and here's the thing, with the technology that man is doing with, um, with cloning and stuff, they've already cloned human beings and they've succeeded. Cloning animals is old news, so they clone this, they clone him, and take his DNA. They've already they're already doing stuff of trying to clone dinosaurs and stuff like that to bring extinct animals back. Yeah, full on, man. Well, they would think he was a god. Absolutely. To be dead that long and then come back to life like that, they would they would allow him to sit on the throne of God. They would think this this guy was a god. So, point being is it's it's definitely worth going to be to watch and see what happens. Um, the last last two verses I want to get into. Uh, there's so much more I want to go over. So, you guys ready for another two hours? Sure. I'm out. I, I heard I heard one yes. <laughs> All right. Revelation 12:17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who do what? And who keep the commandments of Yah and have the testimony of Yeshua. Revelation 14. One more verse after this one. 14.12 Here is the patient of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of Yah and the faith of Yeshua. And finally, last but surely not least, Revelation 22, 14, one of my favorite verses. Blessed are those who do His commandments that they may have the right to enter into the city and have access to the tree of life. Does it say those who believe in Yeshua? No. Because for you to enter into heaven, that's already a given. But it says, blessed are those 
there are layers of, of reward that's coming from heaven. Scripture points that out. Okay? The one thing that everybody will be paid the same on is salvation and being able to enter into the kingdom with the Father for all eternity. That is the parable of the, of the, the workers where those who started in the morning were paid uh, a shekel, those who started midday get the same pay, and those who came in the last hour got the same pay. That is our salvation. We all get the same pay. We all enter into heaven. But do you think that your reward or my reward is going to be the same as Abraham's reward or Moshe's reward or uh, Paul's reward? No way, man. We ain't even touching their reward. All of our reward will be different. But it says, blessed are those who keep the commandments that they will be allowed to enter into the city and have access to the tree of life. Amen. 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 Uh, don't turn it off. Uh, let's do the uh, ironic blessing, and then uh, and then we'll be dismissed. <laughs> you want to put it on the ironic blessing? Just air it down, I guess. Yeah, you got it. Alright, do you guys want to try and do it in Hebrew with me or I'll just do the Hebrew and we do, or you do the English? Do it together? Okay. Yabarakacha Yabe. Baish Baraka. Yabe. Hana Alaka Bakunaka. Yasa Yabe Hanabilaka Bayasim Laka Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach Hasar Shalom. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen and Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.